Beat 7 special report. He pleaded guilty because I'm guilty and I want the death penalty. You want the death penalty? Yes. Why? So I'm ready to die. Because it's pretty hard sometimes to live with all the things that I've done. I mean, you have dreams about it, wake up in the middle of the night, and you think you see somebody in your cell that you've killed or something. It's kind of, it gets kind of hard sometimes. So, versus life. However many years I would have left to live, I'm 31. I guess I would probably live at least another 40 or 50 years in a eight foot by 11 foot cell like they have out there in prison. Forget it. In 1976, Thomas Eugene Creech was sentenced to hang for the murders of two men near Cascade, Idaho. A U.S. Supreme Court ruling struck down Idaho's death sentence, and Creech was given a reprieve, two consecutive life sentences. A reprieve which allowed him on May 13, 1981, to kill 23-year-old David Jensen, a fellow inmate in the maximum security section of the Idaho State Prison. Over the years, Creech has confessed to 42 murders. Now he has narrowed that list to 26 a list that includes nine persons he says gang-raped his second wife, a homosexual in San Francisco, five dope dealers in Ohio, and the three persons in Idaho. Creech says Jensen's death was the most senseless because Jensen shouldn't have been in maximum security with other hardened criminals. There are some who say Creech shouldn't have been there either, that Creech should have been executed a long time ago. Now Creech is asking for the death penalty. The poet, Horace, referred to death as the downward path. Tom Creech has been stalking the downward path since he was 15, when he killed for the first time. Your first time to do any hard time? Uh, armed robbery? Mm-hmm. Uh, what age were you in? Well, I did military time before I did armed robbery time. But I was 18 when I first got arrested. You'd already killed it when you were 18. Mm -hmm. Nobody had found out about it, is that true? No, I tried to tell different people. In fact, that was one of the reasons that I left home when I was 15 and ran away, was that I tried to tell people some of the things that I'd been into and that I'd witnessed, and everybody seemed to think that I was just playing games with them. How did you kill 15? The first person I killed were, or that I can say I was responsible for killing was because of an accident that happened to my girlfriend. We was going to be married, but we never were. Accident that killed her? That killed her, and I held the guy responsible. Car so. accident? Mm hmm Okay, what did you do? So later we went out, and another person was with me, and we were racing over by Mason, Ohio, and we ran him off the road. And he got in the car. You didn't actually take a gun out and shoot no. Did you get any sort of thrill out of that, or, or was it revenge? How did you feel about that? I thought at the time that I was doing the right thing, that, you know, I, that I should get even. So I can't really say what I felt at the time. I was scared. People get even in different ways. You know? mm -hmm. There are different ways. Why did you choose the ultimate way, I guess, to get even? Well, I guess probably because I, the way that I, my thoughts, my the values that I had, and the way certain things that happened in my life, 
I thought the only way to get even or to avenge some wrong was you do it all the way, you don't half do it and then let the guy come back for the second chance. I got in a fight in school and I'd just gotten some new clothes. I think it was uh, right at the start of the school year. And I you had about how old? Um, nine or ten, something like that. And I got in a fight at school and I didn't fight back. And the little guy that beat me up pushed me down and and I'd ripped my pants. And I got a spanking for not, or for, I guess I actually was for ripping my pants, but it was explained to me that I should have at least fought back. And after that, I did start fighting. And I, I even went back and beat the same little guy. I beat him about half to death. Told you to fight back. My father that I should always fight back. And I should never just let someone push me and get by with it. He was a pretty stern man. I got whipped a lot. Yeah. But you didn't just like your father. No, I love my father very much. I was fairly close with my father when it comes to outdoor things, like fishing and hunting, because I was the one out of all the children that was into guns and liked guns and liked the outdoor life. That's probably why I didn't do well in school. I liked the outdoors too much. But as far as really sitting down to him and really talking to him, I never did do that. He never did. You never talked about mm -hmm. human values or anything? No. We, well, we did talk about some things like that. Standing up for what you believe in and stuff like that. But for really sitting down and talking to him for any length of time, I just never did. It hurt him a great deal to see his sons grow up and, you know, go to prison and stuff. Uh, I don't think that he ever, he died before he ever knew that I committed any murder, so. He knew that you were, you were in prison, but he didn't know what, all that you had done. He didn't know everything that I'd done, no. How do you think he would have reacted? It would have broken his heart, probably, to see one of his sons do the things that I've done. He came to visit me, I was in Chillicothe Correctional Institution, and he came to visit me on May 31st, 1970, and we had just finished eating dinner there you're allowed to bring in food to the inmates. And I looked over and he was, I'd been talking to my mom, my youngest brother, Joey, and I looked at my father and he was slumped over at the table. And I lifted him back and he was just all blue and he was having a heart attack. There they have what they call inmate nurses. They call the one to go to the hospital to get the oxygen, which by walking is only a three minute walk. And he took a truck and it took him 27 minutes to get it. So my dad died, and I told him that when I come back from my father's funeral that I was going to kill him. Did you? No, I tried, but he didn't die. He wouldn't die. I stabbed him 18 or 19 times. Did you? And were you charged, ever charged with that? No. They sent me to Lima State Hospital for a criminally insane, and I spent 14 months there. You still have hatred for, uh, I think you have a list of three people that you want to kill. Is that person on the list? No. You don't, you don't yeah. still have any hatred toward that person? Well, it wouldn't be a good idea to have me around him if I've ever seen him again, I don't think. But the people, the ones that I uh, possibly would kill if I had the chance would be the ones, two of them raped my wife that was involved in the rape, and the man that started the whole thing that was actually the reason behind the whole thing happened. It happened because of drugs, a shipment of drugs that never got to where they were supposed to be. And we were accused of taking them. And you were dealing at that time? I was a runner for some people out of Nevada. And I decided, my wife and I, that I wasn't going to run drugs no more. And I tried to quit. And the people didn't want us out. They wanted us to keep running. And so I told them that I had the drugs and a little black book hidden and I was going to turn it over to the Federal Strike Force Against Organized Crime if they ever bothered me or my family or if anything happened to us. So eventually they had me set up on a burglary bus and put in Rocky Butte Jail in, in Portland. And while I was there, they sent the people to my house to find out, thinking my wife knew where the drugs and the book was at. Was there a book? Yeah, they were. Um, but she didn't know anything. 
So when they found out she didn't know anything, they raped her and then threw her out the window thinking it would kill her, but she lived through it. And she was able to identify two of the people, but the doctors had declared her mentally incompetent because they said it was such a traumatic experience for her, and she was all broken up and stuff. So she couldn't testify against them? So they couldn't make no arrest because of her testimony. They couldn't use it because of her being incompetent. So at that time, I decided to go do it myself. Why, I think there's a list of 11, you said that there's a list of 11 that, uh, that were involved. All 11 were in that apartment? Mm-hmm. Plus the girl that drove the van for him, which was Jane Rasmuth. You, you, you killed Jane mm -hmm. Rasmuth? Uh, what was the name? Rasmuth, Jane Rasmuth. You said the Morgan. Mm -hmm. And there are two left? And there's two of the, the, nine, uh, the 11 guys left. Was that... Were you involved in organized crime mm -hmm. when you were running drugs? Mm -hmm. Why did you think that, that you could, you know, that that type of thing wouldn't happen? I guess I just didn't want to believe it, that I thought it would be, you could just quit when you wanted to, but it's not that way. You can't just walk out from and and just walk away from it. There's just no way you can do it. Okay, let me turn the tables on you then. Somebody did something horrible to your wife, mm -hmm. and since that time, <clears throat> you have tried to kill one of them. Mm -hmm. You think that Tom Creech might have been a little responsible for that? For what happened to her? Oh, I know I'm, I'm responsible. I should, if I would have never been running drugs involved with the people I was involved with, it never would have happened to her. You kill all of those people. If you got out tomorrow, you could kill the other two. That wouldn't make it any better, right? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't make it any better at all. It wouldn't bring her back. It, it wouldn't ease your conscience. It wouldn't even ease my conscience. I'd still feel about it the rest of my life. It was something that I decided to do at the time. And I can't say as if I would do it different if I had to go through it again. And it's not a... I don't look at it as being a heroic thing. It was... I felt that I owed that to my wife to do. Young kid sitting out there watching this on TV, he's going to think it's a little bit. What do, you him? What, do you, what do you say to him to keep him from being, doing the same thing? That there is, there is law and order that eventually will take care of those kind of people. Sometimes our legal system doesn't work as fast as we want it to, or the way we want it to, but eventually it does work. Really? I think it, in the long run, it does. Okay, but so often it doesn't. The legal system doesn't, uh, doesn't help the innocent. Then you have your Tom Creeches. Creeches' second wife, Thomas Thane, hanged herself in the Oregon State Mental Hospital in 1979. Why do you want to die? That's hard to, to answer, mainly because I don't want to kill again. And I don't want to hurt anybody again. My family, every time I do something, it hurts them. And I don't want to destroy what love there is between my family and especially my daughter and myself. And I think that if I was placed back in the same situation that I just come out of at the joint out there, I would kill again. And I would, it would be easier um, to go ahead and die. Maybe that's the easy way out, but I think it's the best way for myself and my family and those that I care about, not to hurt them and bring them more disgrace and shame that I've already brought them. You ready to die? <laughs> I'll be ready when the time comes. I'm preparing for it now. So it gets a little scary sometimes. But. What about your relationship with your mother? The last time I talked to you, you, uh, you said that uh, 
uh, your mother had just sent you, I think it was your birthday, and your, your mother had just sent you a card. Mm -hmm. How does she feel about all of this? I'm, uh, since I've been here to jail, my mom visits me, and I'm probably closer with her now than I've ever been in my whole life. And uh, this is really hard on her. You mean the last? After the Jensen murder, and since you've been here in the Ada County Jail? At this Ada County Jail, wow. this time, these last nine months. Any I've, idea why that brought it closer? I think because we've talked about my life and the things that I've screwed up on and haven't done so well. And uh, probably because she realizes that this is it. This is the last of it. How did she react when... Uh, did you tell her that you were asking for the death penalty? Mm -hmm. How did she react to that? She cried. Just cried? Didn't try to beg you to not to oh, do she it? she asked me not to please not go through with it. But, you know, she has her life and I have mine. And I think she'll understand it. Yeah. She, does she, is it something that she keeps continually trying to talk about? You think she's accepted it, I guess is what I'm Well, thinking. I've tried to talk to her several times about it and she usually tr turns the subject off to something else. She doesn't even want to believe it that it's happening. Other members of your family, what do they say? My sister has talked to me about it. She doesn't want me to do it. My ex-wife and my youngest daughter, they don't want me to do it. Let's talk about your youngest daughter. How old? She's 13. What kind of do you have with her? Have you ever had a relationship with this? We've got a fairly good relationship for me being in prison and not being able to be around her and stuff. In fact, I'm trying to get them brought out here so I can visit with her. But a lot of the things that I've done has went in the news and they went nationwide and they went back there. And it's really hurt her quite a bit. And she's had to even see a psychiatrist because it's caused her really some bad problems. My daughter like, knows what her father's done. Yeah, she does. Everything? Everything. Do you, do you write your daughter on a regular basis? Do you correspond uh, with her? On pretty much regularly. I try to talk to her. I call her and talk to her on the phone. Does she write you? Mm hmm How does she feel about what you've done? Do you, does she understand it, do you think? Uh, I don't think she really completely understands it. That's what is so important for me to bring her here so I can talk to her face to face and really explain it to her. Because it's really hard to explain to a 13-year-old kid in a letter everything so they'll really understand it. I think she understands part of it, but like my mother and like the other members of my family, she doesn't, I don't think, really believe that it's going to happen. Do or... you think her mother would let her come? Boise to see you? Mm -hmm. Does we've her talked mother have any problems with the influence that, uh, that you might have? No, they, she wants her to come and see me and so I can explain things to her face to face. And I believe that it's only right that, they, that she does come because all she's heard mostly is, you know, things from the news that's hurt her real bad. And I think by me sitting down and explaining to her, why I did certain things that I did and really talk to her about it. It might keep her from herself growing up to get in problems. Has she had any problems? She's had some problems. Running away? Uh, not running away yet, but she's had a few problems in school and stuff. She knows all the bad things I've done and she's not very proud of it. I mean, she tells me she's not, but she still loves me and she still thinks I'm the greatest person in the world. But I would like to leave for her something that she can be proud of, that she can say, well, my dad, he accepted his responsibilities, he was executed for something that he did, and out of that and my life story, somewhere along, if it could help somebody, like I said in court, to keep them from making the same mistakes I had, that's what I'd like to leave for my daughter. Sounded to me like you were going to say, she knows all of the bad things about me, I would like her to know some of the good things about me. You didn't come out and say that, but it sounded to me like you were going to go that way. I would like for her to know some of the good things about Are there me. any good things? I think there's a lot of good in me. What, what, uh, I guess, 
if, if there's good in you, why does bad always take over? Because I put myself in those situations. I allowed myself to be put in situations that I probably could have stopped. What's good all. about Tom Cruise? <laughs> I have a lot of good about me. I have feelings that people don't realize that I have. I think the best thing about me is my, uh, my poetry writing that I write that has touched a lot of people, I think. or just Jensen's? Most of them. I feel sorry for their families. I'm not saying I feel sorry for every person that I killed because that would be lying. I regret it, but I can't say that I'm sorry, that I feel sorry for those that I killed, but I do feel sorry for all their families. Is there anyone that... that okay, let's, let's break it down a little more. 26 mm -hmm. people killed. Mm -hmm. Approximately how many of those do you, can you look back on and say, I feel some remorse for what I did here? All of them? Half of them? I would say most of them I do feel remorse or regret for doing them. As far as for each one of them, each individual, feeling sorry for them, it depends. I, I, I don't know how to answer that. What are your feelings on capital punishment? I believe that it could be a deterrent. I don't, the way it is, the way it's affected me anyway, I never really looked at the death penalty as being real because I never did see it happen to anybody. And it seemed, I couldn't really relate to it because it wasn't right there in my grasp where I could say, well, I've experienced it, I've seen this guy get executed. So I believe that if, if it's ever really going to be a deterrent, people will have to be made aware of it. I mean, if a guy was out there getting ready, to commit it, getting ready to commit a murder, if he could see an actual execution on tape or something, I believe it might possibly be a deterrent because he could look and he could say, wow, that's real. When you started, when you were 15, there were people dying still. Did that film Yeah, but they never showed none of it. You heard about it, but you didn't see it. You wouldn't watch yours, did you? Tape, would I, I, I would wish that it would be, because I think that's the only way they're ever going to be a deterrent in capital punishment. Sounds like you're saying go back to public hands. Sure. That's the only way a criminal is, or a person that's going to commit a murder is going to relate to it. Otherwise, he sees it as just some fantasy or something, mm -hmm. something not real. The legislature changed the, uh, uh, the way to die. Um, time you were sentenced to hang. Mm -hmm. Now you want to be sentenced to, to lethal injection. Do you have any preferences? If I had my choice, I would take hanging over lethal injection. Why? It just seems spooky to have, have a bunch of needles stuck in you and just lay there, it seems so clean and stuff. 
doesn't seem macho. No, it's not that. It's just that I never did particularly care about needles. And it it kind of makes me feel that I take I took a lot of sodium pentothal tests for Dr. Haver a few years back, and my tolerance to drugs is so high the resistance. I think it would take a lot of that stuff to kill me. Whereas hanging or being shot or something, it's real quick. It's fast. That way you don't have a chance to get scared. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you believe in a merciful God? Yes. Do you believe that if you make your peace with God before you die, that you're going to go to an afterlife of some kind? I, I believe that's uh, that'll happen on judgment when the judgment comes. I believe that. Uh, I believe in God, I believe that he's forgiven me of all the things that I've done. And I've made a commitment to him to try not to do any of those things again. But like I said the other day in the court, it's up to him. Myself, personally, I don't know if I can control, if put in a certain situation, if I could control, control it or not, I would certainly try. A lot of people talk about jailhouse religion. Mm -hmm. Most people use religion in jail to as a means to try to get out. They think it'll get them in a faster parole or, or so, whatever, which I don't do that. I try my best to, to get it done as quickly as possible. Okay. It started in August when I pled guilty, and here it is nine months later, or however many months it is. I'm still sitting here. I've uh, already requested that they do it as fast as possible, the, the appeal procedures. And once it's filed, I'll probably make a request that they hear it as soon as possible. Any final request? The, my greatest thing that I want right now is to see my daughter and to be able to talk to her and explain to her everything in detail so her little mind can be at ease once and for all. And that would put you at peace? It would put me completely at peace.